Thank you for joining us for Feline Enrichment Orientation. Enrichment is the process for meeting the behavioral needs of animals by improving their environment or behavioral care by using toys, hiding areas, opportunity to play, exercise, and social interaction with people. After today's training, you'll be level one volunteers in feline enrichment and spending time with cats to ensure their emotional well-being. Enrichment consists of petting, grooming, talking, and playing with cats both in their cage and the communal room. Approaches to enrichment vary based on the individual needs of the cats. Some cats prefer a more hands-on approach, while others prefer a more hands-off approach. Cats that come into our shelter are usually nervous and scared. As feline enrichment volunteers, you are here to help them feel comfortable, come out of their shell, show their true personalities, which helps with their adoptions. We will start off with going over body language of the cats. So cats use their eyes, ears, whiskers, tail, and body posture as a way to communicate to people how they are feeling. They're always communicating with us, but sometimes it can be difficult to understand them, unless you're comfortable reading and familiar with their body language. We'll start off with the cat's ears. Ears pointed forward can convey friendly interest and a degree of attentiveness. Ears that are pricked up and turned slightly backwards may be a warning that the cat's feeling irritated and con contemplating an aggressive reaction. Ears that are raised and twisted back combined with hissing means a cat is ready to attack. Ears that are flattened back indicate a cat is feeling threatened. As you can see in the picture on the left, the cat's ears are pointed forward and looking very friendly. The cat in the picture in the right top corner, the ears are pointed back with combined with hissing. This means the cat is ready for attack. The cat in the bottom right corner, you can see the ears are pricked back, so the cat is slightly annoyed. Moving on to cat eyes. Cat pupils will dilate with low light and constrict with bright light. Cat's eyes may also dilate due to medical conditions. A cat's pupils will also dilate when they're feeling fearful or unsure. They may also dilate in a high state of arousals, like play or hunting. Constricted pupils paired with aggression means the cat is ready for a fight. When a cat squints or blinks slowly, sometimes referred to as cat kisses, she is relaxed and happy. But also slowly blinking may mean that they're fearful or stressed. Wide eyes can mean anything from attentiveness to aggression, so it's important to take other body language into consideration. A cat's tail can tell you a lot about how they're feeling. A relaxed raised tail is a friendly greeting. Some cats will wave their tail back and forth when they're excited or aroused. A sudden whip of the tail shows a threat of impending attack. A highly excited or agitated cat waves their tail from side to side in a jerky rapid motion. The tip of the tail moving means alertness or slight dissatisfaction. A tail held straight up and bristled indicates caution. A tail tucked in close to the body may indicate fear. Piloerection, or puffed up tail, may also indicate fear or arousal. As you can see in the chart, the tail can tell you a lot about how a cat is feeling. I'll give you a minute to read through the chart now. Cats have many different vocalizations. They include purrs and trills, meows, and aggressive vocalizations. All vocalizations you'll hear here in the shelter. I'll give you a minute now to read through the different vocalizations. The most common vocalizations you'll hear in the shelter are purrs, meows, moans, growls, hisses, and yes, cats can spit. Now let's put everything together what we've learned. As you can see from this picture, the cat is relaxed and content. 
the ears are up and pointed forward, the eyes are relaxed, the pupils are normal with the lighting, and the whiskers are also relaxed. As you can see, this cat is very fearful. This is the common type of cat you'll see in the shelter. The ears are flattened back, the body is tense, they're in a crouching position with the tail tucked underneath, the whiskers are drawn towards the face, the eyes are wide, and the pupils are dilated. These are the cats that need you. Work with them, stand and talk with them. Work within their capacity to help bring them out of their shells, which will help with their adoptability. As you can see, this cat is very friendly and playful. The body is relaxed and in a vulnerable position. The eyes are relaxed, the ears are relaxed, and the cat is in a very playful mood. But as we all know, not all cats like belly rubs, so probably using a wand toy would be best. Now we will go over handling the cats. When approaching a new cat in its cage, pay close attention to its body language. Also, avoid direct eye contact as this is a threatening gesture to a cat that doesn't know you. The first thing you'll do is read the enrichment reports. These are located on the cat's clipboard. On these reports, previous volunteers will write notes about what that certain cat likes and doesn't like. For example, Lily really enjoyed the wand toy today, so you can go look for that wand toy to start the interactions with. At the end of working with that cat, please put your notes so the next volunteer knows what that cat enjoyed. After you read the enrichment reports, you want to assess the cat's overall body language. Does she appear to be relaxed, friendly? Is she at the front of the cage? Does she appear to be very anxious? Is she cowering at the back of the cage? Or is she showing any signs of aggression? Once you have assessed the overall body language, you want to approach the cat quietly and calmly. Do not approach by putting your hand directly over the cat's head. If the cat doesn't approach you, meet her halfway with an extended index finger. This mimics when two cats greet one another by touching noses. This is the proper way to say, how do you do? When petting a cat for the first time, it's always best to avoid the areas that are sensitive, such as the hind end, the stomach, or the paws. Start by rubbing around the cat's cheeks, down the neck and the head, and if they lean into you, gently extend your hand along their back. If the cat tenses up, or the skin begins to twitch, or the cat whips its head around towards your hand, it may not be enjoying what you're doing. There are different ways you can interact with the cats, either in their cages or at their cages. You can play in the cage or in the front of the cage with the door open or shut. You can use the wand toys or laser pointers in either case. Move the wand toy, laser pointer, and other toys so the cat can chase it, pounce on it, bite it, or kick it. If a cat escapes, don't worry, it happens all the time. Come get a staff member and we're happy to help you. Cat bites and scratches are a serious thing in the shelter. They can pose a serious risk to people due to the amount of bacteria in a cat's saliva. Therefore, if you are bitten or scratched, please let a staff member know right away so we can get you the proper medical care. We also wanna use what we've learned today about cat body language to ensure we can avoid bites and scratches. This is very important for the sake of the cat. Anytime an animal bites or scratches, we have to contact the health department. The health department then puts the cat on a 10 day quarantine. That means the cat has to stay in the shelter for 10 extra days instead of getting out of the shelter and into their forever home. Now that we've learned all about cat body language and how to properly work with the cats, now we need to move into a very important thing in the shelter environment. Biosecurity. Biosecurity is anyone working closely with multiple animals can carry disease from one to another, from different animals to people. Proper sanitation and correct use of protective equipment are essential to stop the spread of disease. Every person working with animals is responsible for preventing the spread of disease. There are biosecurity levels. These levels are posted on each cat room. Level one is a green circle which means there's low risk of infectious disease. Level two is an orange triangle, so there's moderate to unknown risk of infectious disease. Level three is a red octagon, which is high risk. Usually this is staff only. Each cat room will be marked to denote its biosecurity level. Levels change as needed and can change at any time, so always be updating before you work with the animals. On occasion, different areas of a room will have different levels.
this chart will always be up for you to refer to. If you ever have questions about buyer security, any of the staff are happy to help. There is also biosecurity tags. This is different from the biosecurity levels because the tags cover the individual cats. The biosecurity tags will be on the individual cat's clipboard. If you see a cat with a green tag, this means this cat is very vulnerable. For example, they could have FIV, feline leukemia, or be very small kittens. These are the cats that you want to handle first. Cats can also have red tags. Red tags mean that they have something contagious, such as an upper respiratory infection. You want to handle these cats last and wear gown and gloves. You want to sanitize your hands, change your glove and gowns between every red animal. The way I remember it is green means go, start with those cats first, red means stop, do those cats last. It makes sense. You don't want to go to a contagious cat and then go play with a vulnerable cat. We want to try to minimize the spread of disease in the shelter environment. This concludes the feline enrichment orientation. Now you've learned all about cat body language, behaviors, and biosecurity. But most of all, have fun. You're here to enrich the lives of the cats, make them feel loved and comfortable, make them come out of their shell, which helps with their adoptability. That's what we're here for to find these cats their new forever home. Thank you very much. We're very excited to have you part of the HSDR team.